All right, guys, so this is activity four. It's just using unit rates to compare again, but this time we're looking at gas mileage. So this is another great real world example for you because the term you, you don't wanna get, um, well, there's a couple of things you need to consider when purchasing a car and gas mileage is a huge deal because gas is so expensive. So you really do want a car that's really good on gas. That means it has a, a better gas mileage, meaning you can get more miles for each gallon of gas, okay? Um, unfortunately, Ms. Choquette uh, decided she wanted a nice, fa a fast car. So I got her a, um, I got her, got me a, um, a Kia Stinger. I love it. It's so fast. Um, it's a really cool car. I've had it for two and a half years. Anyways, I got rid of a really large gas guzzling vehicle for this car. Um, it was, I used to drive a Suburban. Any, anywho. Um, so my Stinger, it does get better gas mileage than my Suburban. I think my Suburban got about 17 miles to the gallon. And my Stinger, if I, if I, if I drive her nice, really nice, like in eco mode, um, she can get like 25, 26 miles on average for a gallon. Um, unfortunately, because of the engine that's in that sports car, it requires premium gas, which is more expensive than regular gas. So even though the car gets better gas mileage, I'm actually paying more money per gallon so, I mean, I haven't done the comparison to see, like, is it a better deal that I got that car? Um, anyways, so um, things to consider when purchasing a car. So, for uh, this one, I'm going to do that example. It's uh, These are some interesting cars. They aren't real cars. They're made-up cars, but you get the point. It says a local paper published these rates on gas mileage for a few new cars. And um, it says... An, an Avalar, an Avalar can travel 480 miles on 10 gallons of gas. A Centaur can travel 400 miles on eight gallons of gas. And a, is that corn? Oh no, Comstar can travel 360 miles on nine gallons of gas. So, um, all right. So uh, the way you always wanna look at gas mileage is you don't wanna know, you don't wanna know per mile, you wanna know per gallon of gas. So gas mileage is always miles per gallon, okay? Always, miles per gallon. Same thing with speed. It's always miles per hour, okay? So we gotta be really, we don't wanna do it the other way. It, it just, I mean, you can make sense out of it at doing gallons per mile per, how many gallons per one mile, but honestly, in the real world, it's miles per gallon. You're trying to figure out how many miles you can get out of one gallon of gas. Um, which you're going to need to know because if you're like Miss Choquette and like to push that tank and you and your little tankometer thing that tells you how much gas you have left says you have one mile or you have one gallon of gas. I'm like, I got 25 miles still. I might only have one gallon in the tank. Okay. Um, a lot of times though, your your these newer cars, they kind of give you that information. But I mean, if you drive it right, you can really pull more miles out of that tank. All right, so we want to know miles per gallon, okay? That means we're gonna take miles and divide by gallon. So whatever the miles is, we're gonna take that number and divide it by the number for gallon, okay? Miles per gallon. So the Avalar, the miles, 480 divided by 10. For the Centaur, you get 400 divided by eight. Here for the Comstar, you get 360 divided by 9. And we're going to find miles per gallon. Miles per gallon. So 480 divided by 10, that should be 48. I'm just going to plug it in the calculator. I'm right, because we're dividing by one power of 10, which means we, lose, we move our decimal one place value to the left. So we're going to 48 miles per gallon. I'm using that slash for the word per. per. Here, 40, 400 divided by eight is 50. So you get 50 miles per gallon. And then for that one, it's, it's, I mean, we know these, these are easy numbers to work with. It's 40. 
I knew that, I just wanted to punch it in the calculator. So this one is 40 miles per gallon. So the better one, honestly, I mean, if we think about it, we want the one you can go the furthest on per gallon. Like if you got one gallon left in the tank, you want the car that'll get you the furthest. You know what I'm saying? So um, the one with the largest number of miles is that Centaur. That's the car I want. And I'm hoping that Centaur takes regular gas and that premium. So uh, we calculated each unit rate by taking uh, the miles and dividing, divided by gallons, okay? And then how does the unit rate help you compare these cars? I, I should be writing in complete sentences. I am so sorry, guys, I'm being a bad model. Um, so uh, let's just see. I divided the number of miles by the number of gallons, okay? How can unit rates? So I found miles per gallon and can determine which car has more or has, let's say, has the most miles per gallon. All right, so that's pretty much the only like example I wanted to do here for miles per gallon. There is another one, um, it's, I think it's in this one. Um, the other one has something to do with um, sitting at a table, like how many guests could you sit at per table? So you would do the number of guests Oh, this is loaves of bread. So, um, honestly, if you're if you're sharing the bread, if that's what you're sharing, then you want to do guess per loaf. Yeah, because you don't. Let me think. No, you want your you want to know how much bread per guest, because you don't you want to you want you don't want half a guest. Okay. So for here. If you're looking at loaves of bread, guess at a dinner, dinner play, at a dinner play, sit at three tables. Each table receives large round loaves of bread instead of individual rolls. Each person at the table shares the loaves equally. So table one has six guests and is served two loaves of bread. Table two has eight guests and is served three loaves of bread. And table three has 10 guests and is served four loaves of bread. So when we wanna talk about, are we gonna do it per loaf? Well, that doesn't really make sense but, um, or if we wanna do it per person, we wanna know which one do we wanna equal one. That's the thing that comes after the word per, because per person means per one person. Per loaf means per one loaf. And we don't want to pick per loaf, because there's a possibility of having half a person, which you can't have half a person. So it makes more sense to do it per person, per one person, okay? That's, um, it makes more sense in the real world. So to do these things, we would want to know bread per person. That means we would take the number for bread and divide by the number of pe people. So for table one, it would be two loaves divided by six. For table two, it would be three loaves divided by eight guests, eight guests, three loaves, six guests, two loaves. And for table three, it was bread divided by guest, okay? Which would equal, so then we would have our rate. So two divided by six is 0 0.3 three per person. So 0 
loaves of bread. I forgot to put bread. Uh, three divided by eight is 0 0.75 bread per person. And then four divided by 10 would be 0 0.4 bread per person. So you would want the one that gives you more bread per person, right? Wouldn't you want to sit at the table where as one person I would get more bread? I want this table. That's where I'm sitting. All right. Um, another one I wanted to look at is something that has to do with like speed. So um, down here at the bottom on page 325, we have speed um, of a bus that drove 120 miles in two hours and another bus that drove 180 miles in three hours. So we wanna compare them which bus drove faster. So we wanna know which one is faster. Um, so the way you do that is you determine speed. And speed, speed is always calculated in miles per hour. And a lot of times you see that as miles per hour. So you've probably seen that before. Um, that means you take the number of miles and divide by the hours. So for uh, this tour bus, you would do 120 divided by two. And for this tour bus, you would do 180 divided by three. And 120 divided by two is 60. And the way you would write that is miles per hour, 160 miles per hour and you can use this mph abbreviation because that's what you see in the real world and 180 divided by three is also 60 miles per hour so which bus drove faster well you would pick the one that has the the bigger number because it's which one's the fastest right we all know that going 20 miles an hour or 20 miles 20 miles per hour is faster than 10 miles per hour. We know going 100 miles per hour is faster than going 50 miles per hour. We've all been in a car. We know how that works. So, but in this case, they're the same. They're the same. So they drive 60 miles for every hour. So speed is something you need to calculate too. So the interesting thing about these, about these, this activity is, um, you're understanding miles per gallon, which is also MPG. That's a lot, you see that abbreviated a lot. So miles per gallon, that's something real world. Understanding that if you're finding something like this, you wanna find per the per one for something you don't wanna be splitting, a, splitting into pieces. So in this case, you don't wanna be splitting people up, okay? And then um, I did an example for speed down here. So there's a lot more other examples in this activity, but I think those are the ones that are the most important. So a little bit shorter video for you guys. We'll be practicing more in class.